Okay, hi there and welcome to a micro video. We're going to take a look at the short run in perfect competition and look at the diagrams needed to show supernormal profit and loss. Always be aware of some of the key assumptions of perfect competition, uh, that products are homogenous, they're standardized, they're all perfect substitutes for each other. Firms have equal access to all key factors of production. There are a very large number of both buyers and sellers and the sellers have no power in the market. They must act independently. There's no opportunity for price collusion. Uh, there's free costless entry into and exit out of the market. And as a result of producing the same product, firms face a perfectly elastic demand curve. Uh, they also assume in the market that there is perfect knowledge and information. Everybody knows that all the characteristics of the market and who's selling what and charging what. And we assume that to consumers aim to maximize utility, firms, suppliers aim to maximize profit, where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. We get close to perfect competition in some markets. You might have lots and lots of small wheat growers in an industry. You might have many small bakeries producing pretty homogenous bakery products in a city. Hundreds of flour sellers at a wholesale market or tens of fruit sellers in a big street market. Uh, sporting bets on a race course it takes us close to perfect competition, as does a Spanish resort, for example, where there might be multiple bars and nightclubs which pretty much offer the same product. So we get close, but of course this is a theoretical nicety in large part. So what about the diagram? Well, you're looking to see uh, the interaction between the market supply and demand and the individual representative firm. So the left-hand side is the market. The right hand side is one firm in that industry. The market sets the price. The interaction between supply and demand gives price P1. There we go, price P1. That then becomes the demand curve for each firm and also it becomes the marginal revenue curve. So AR equals MR in perfect competition. And for a profit maximizing firm, they're going to produce an output here at Q1 where MC meets MR. And we can find the unit cost of that is C1 using the average cost curve and because price is above cost per unit then they're making this blue shaded area which is the level of super normal profits. In this situation we'd expect new firms to respond to the profit motive and try to enter the industry. Not every industry, not every price guarantees a profit however you also need to be able to show losses made by a firm. So here's a different scenario again the market price this time is going to be lower Perhaps market demand is not as strong. So we get price P1 in equilibrium. Again, that becomes the demand curve for the firm. And when they try to profit maximize this time, actually they're loss minimizing. Output Q1 is the best output they can choose, but the cost is now higher. There we go. Than the price. C1 lies above P1. Can you see that? Hence they're making uh, a blue shaded area which is actually this time an economic loss then the issue becomes do they carry on producing well that depends if the price is higher than the shutdown price which is the the variable cost of production so key, key takeaway points each firm in this market is a passive price taker in that sense there's no real competition each firm faces a perfectly elastic demand curve for its product the amount of profit or loss depends on the prevailing market price and also the short-term cost of each firm. But the number of firms in the long run will adjust uh, to the profits being made. In the long run, equilibrium, all firms make normal profits. Now in this video I've shown you how to show profit and loss, but do be prepared to take your analysis a bit further to trace and analyze the impact of changes in market supply and demand conditions in the industry. That would uh, be an analysis question you could uh, think about. Okay, thank you.